This is Car Deck Radio for Teens. And now it's time for Message from a Teen in the Spirit World with your hosts, Mark Smith and Carol Correa. Hello, friends. Today is a blessed day, first and foremost, because we are in your company. Second, because this is a space created for you and for us to come together to look at ourselves as immortal spirits and set millennial immortal goals for ourselves. So this is a very liberating, beautiful space. But there's yet another reason why we are joyful, especially today. It is because it has been exactly one year that you and us are together in this beautiful partnership blessed by divine love and divine fraternity. So happy birthday, dear listeners. We are completing one year of beautiful, inspiring, loving partnership. And we wouldn't be here without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And to celebrate this very beautiful opportunity and gift, we are going to read about Carlos' take on his experience in spiritual schools. Did you know, dear listener, that there are schools specially designed for reflection and to offer learning opportunities to spirits that are free of the physical body? Isn't it a beautiful gift to know that we are blessed with many, many chances to continue learning. How beautiful is that? So let us now open our hearts, minds, and spiritual eyes to learn all the more with Carlos' learning experiences. The Complex Bright and early the next day, Aunt Eunice took me to the huge complex. The path leading to it offered gentle enchantment to my eyes and indescribable contentment to my imagination. Blossoming trees filled the atmosphere with a delightful fragrance. I saw that there was activity going on all around the homes we passed, but I rarely saw another child. Commenting on my surprise, Aunt Eunice told me that the village was devoted almost exclusively to the work of re-educating boys and girls coming from the earth, but that most of them were residents at the complex and were involved in solving their personal problems. She also informed me that only after they had made enough spiritual progress could these children return to earth or seek out higher realms. She explained that not all the children who died in the world have to come here because there are children who are very virtuous and are thus exempt from any corrective activity. However, most of the children arriving from the earth bring small vices with them and so they require care and instruction. While Aunt Eunice was talking, I blushed with shame as I remembered the idleness and laziness that I used to like so much. After a really enjoyable walk, we finally arrived. The complex was beautiful. I was entrusted to the care of a saintly old man who was in charge of newly arrived children. Since I was not yet sufficiently sure of myself, I rested for several days and didn't try anything that took a lot of effort. So I had more time available to examine the huge place. There are so many buildings situated among groves of trees and there's an abundance of flowers. Many are different from the ones we're familiar with in earthly gardens and some of them have the ability to retain the daylight. At night, They resemble tiny radiant stars that seem to have fallen from the sky. The very gentle breeze is always filled with aroma. There's not one building that doesn't have flowers around it. Study and work are intense. 
The complex is subdivided into several schools. Many teachers work here, and there are so many children that I still cannot calculate the exact number. They are of all ages and sizes except for the ones who've come from the physical plane and who are less than seven years old. A new friend told me that there are special courses and places for them. What a blessed journey Carlos just described to us, dear friends, that there are beautiful classrooms and beautiful teachers devoted to educating the spirit. Blessed will be the days when our earthly schools will also be devoted to educating the spirit. Of course, educating the mind or the intellect is very, very important. But our master has shown to us that we need two wings to fly. One wing is the wing of intelligence, and the second wing is the wing of sentiment. And how do we develop sentiment, dear friends? Kardec, in his uh, research in consulting with the illuminated minds that work directly under the guidance of the Christ, has asked this very question. How do we develop ourselves? How do we progress? The answer to this beautiful existential and ultimate question is, self-knowledge. So can you imagine, dear friend, what schools would look like right now if they were geared towards self-knowledge, towards helping us acquire self-knowledge? Perhaps we would have classes on meditation. Perhaps we would have classes on inner transformation. Perhaps we would have classes that would help us identify our millennial goals. Perhaps we would have classes which would help us identify the very habits that we would like to change. How beautiful is that? We can uh, thank the classes and educators that are already here in this beautiful space, Kardec Radio, which allows us to reflect exactly on that. Though, dear friends, you are listening to us through the internet waves, we are exactly in a beautiful classroom without walls at this very moment, reflecting on knowledge that we can take with us through immortality. So let us uh, create the habit of always reading messages that can feed the spirit, that can nourish the soul, that can inspire reflection, inner transformation, visualization, meditation, so that we constantly remind ourselves that the life that we live in is but a temporary experience. And let us rejoice in knowing for a fact through our dear Carlos that learning opportunities shall continue and that we don't need to wait until we discarnate to attend a school. Life itself, dear friends, is a school. And so let us work towards practicing inner transformation and towards revisiting our realities through the eyes of immortal spirits so that we are able to accomplish our reincarnatory plan. For the episodes to come, dear friends, we will see Carlos revisiting his own understanding of himself and of his goals as a spirit. It's beautiful to see how Carlos continuously transforms himself. So let us celebrate the opportunities of inner transformation that life constantly offers us by dedicating a beautiful prayer to all of the loving, discarnate and incarnate spirits who guide us in our journeys on earth. Thank you, mentors, for 
providing us with this space to discuss the goals and beautiful journey of inner transformation that lies within the, ra- within the reach of all of us. And thank you for giving us and for guiding us. Thank you for offering us right now all the resources we need to take on this journey. Thank you for our guardian angels. Thank you for our friends and family. Thank you for Cardiac Radio. Thank you for our center if we go to one. Thank you for all the gifts that we have at our disposal right now to begin this journey, to begin this passage through transformation so that we can better understand ourselves and better understand where we're going in the future. And so be it. So be it. May we literally, dear friends, learn to count our blessings and learn today and always with Carlos how to see ourselves as immortal spirits and how to treasure the gift of this beautiful reincarnation. For us at Kardec Radio, this is a very pleasant endeavor because we are forever reminded of the gift of life through the gift of each and every one of you. So once again, thank you for blessing us with the gift of your presence within our hearts. Rest assured that we remain connected within the internet waves and much beyond. And until we meet again, We wish you many, many beautiful, loving blessings. This has been Kardec Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening.